Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night, about 10 p.m. California time here. February 17, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 3.4 earthquake uh, in the green flag somewhere out here on the map. I know uh, California just seen a little bit of earthquake activity. It just had a little bit of earthquake activity as well. So 3.4 South America. Uh, 3.0 coming into the Barstow area of Southern California just a few minutes ago as well. That seismograph uh, station there in China Lake picked up the earthquake quite nicely. Three-pointer also showing up there on the Barrett station, uh, which is a little bit further south around San Diego. So a little bit of movement out there around Barstow this evening. Very shallow crustal quake indicating the strain out here against the plate boundary. A lot of times we'll start seeing these uh, these various fault systems there at the surface show fracture quakes, and that's what's happening out there. Let's see who felt this earthquake. It's underneath an automatic status, so it has not been reviewed yet. As far as the uh, magnitudes associated with this event, that's a, actually a fairly high rate here, 0.28 error rate. Uh, but that's the station they went with for a 3.03. This one may be a little bit better, uh, which may mean that we'll see a, a little bump up in terms of magnitude adjustment. Quite a few mid threes, upper threes uh, as well. So we'll see what uh, see what the seismologist chooses once they review this earthquake that just came in near the uh, Barstow area in Southern California. Uh, aside from that, a couple smaller earthquakes right on the San Andreas Fault still. Um, that's a little swarm that's been going on out here in the last few days. 17 earthquakes, including a, a number of three-pointers as well. Now, I think it's been more than that. Hold on a second here. Has it been over a week? I guess it has. Um, so we got 36 earthquakes for a total tally. Uh, I know it doesn't go back the last 30 days, but it's been probably about eight days or so. That's why it wasn't showing up here on the uh, uh, weekly option here. But uh, as you can see, number of three-pointers out there just about seven, eight days ago. For a, a total tally of uh, 36 earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment there, quite rare to see a swarm out there on that uh, on the plate boundary like that. I still think those could be some foreshocks. There's a lot of a uh, lot of movement taking place down here in Southern California recently, uh, and it has to be put in the strain here on the plate boundary. A couple smaller quakes out there as well, just some scattered uh, microquakes, but. Uh, I'll keep an eye there on the San Andreas Fault. Further up north, uh, the Bay Area, pretty quiet. A little bit of movement here just outside of the Eureka area at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone today. Uh, got a little bit of trimmer uptick with 465 epicenters of trimmer, mainly down here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So keep an eye on that. That's a fairly hefty number. And uh, the majority, again, down at the southern end. We haven't... Uh, had a whole lot of earthquake activity yet following today's trimmer, but we'll definitely keep an eye on that. The last one, a 2.3 down here across the uh, <coughs> Sacramento Valley area, just outside where I live here in Chico. Very shallow earthquake. Uh, a couple smaller earthquakes around Mount Rainier as well. Really nothing big going on up there for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up, but we do want to double check that for uh, just for verification purposes here. I was looking for some cough drops before I uh, hit the record button. I, I, unfortunately, I didn't find any. So I'm going to try to get through this as best as I can. Uh, looks like we're in a data blackout right now. Um, they all look like they're offline. So no earthquake activity showing up. But again, no data showing up either. So it's a little on the odd side. Um Texas oil field still getting hit. One up in uh, Kansas as well. The rest of the country, pretty quiet. Um, Hawaii area, a couple smaller earthquakes out here in the last 24 hours. As uh, far as the eruption status goes, let's go over here and double check, see if we haven't entered into an eruption yet. A little bit of odd uh, deflationary events earlier today. That's normally a sign of uh, an eruption, but... Uh, earlier there wasn't any so um webcams here they have a youtube link there that that link takes you to a youtube video live stream of uh kilauea volcano 
But, uh, well, it, it almost looks like there was some type of eruption there. I don't know if we're just getting over one or maybe one's just getting ready to start, but it's well lit up there across the Kilauea Volcano. As uh, far as the update goes, this is from this morning, so no new update. Interesting, so maybe uh, it's getting ready to. All right, um, also some larger activity out here across the Santorini area. One of the latest quakes, a 5.1. Although these larger quakes now are starting to occur outside of the main swarming area. Let me show you guys what I mean. Um, zoom into the area of interest. This is a seismograph station here. Live data from 4D. That's down here across this area, which is south of the earthquake swarm in question. There across the Santorini, Greece area. <clears throat> uh, if we pull up the latest earthquakes here, here's a four-pointer. I didn't mean to click on it. I just want to show you guys. Four-pointer off to the east side of that earthquake swarm there in the blue circle. The 5.1 roughly in that same area as well. So we're getting a lot of um, swarming and earthquake activity outside this uh, inflation region, I believe. Now, still pretty deep, 10 kilometers for that five-pointer, um, 10 kilometers for the 4.0. Just got a little sequence of events that's starting to show a little bit more down south here and southeast of the uh, swarming area. Still a lot of earthquake activity. And if you look on the real-time charts here, there's still quite a bit of movement kicking up. Oh, thank you, babe. Brought me some water. I don't know where the cough drops are. <coughs> That's right. We'll get them before bed. I'm definitely going to need them. How's it going, guys? That's Missy Mimi's out there saying hi. Um, she really, I mean, she gets sick once in a while, but uh, it seems like it gets passed on to me a lot. Um, so there's a lot of the earthquakes. The five-pointer are going to be the latest and the largest one. No sign of any harmonic tremor uh, from that station. There's the five-pointer showing up as well. Refresh this for the latest data in the red uh, seismograph reading there. That's a, a decent earthquake. But I'm noticing, like I say, I'm noticing a little bit of migration here on the eastern side. Over the past couple of weeks, it started off in the center, moved down to the south towards the Santorini area, and then more recently worked its way up north. Uh, up until today, we're noticing a broader scale event take place east uh, southeast of the swarming area so that's that's got to be a huge area of magma intrusion underneath this region um, and it'd be interesting to see where this heads off to uh, in terms of the end game uh, so to speak but uh, no eruption as of yet no unusual um, you know volcanic eruption activity this is all still just an earthquake swarm underneath the area strictly and I'm almost 100% certain now this is all magma related so we'll see where it goes, folks. It's, you know, 927 or 932 earthquakes here in the last few days. The number has gone down, but in the past couple of weeks here, we're well over 12,000 earthquakes um, that have been recorded out here, mainly centered around the center core area, but now, you know, and periodically stretching out away from it, indicating fracture quakes uh, due to the buildup underneath this region. And again, this is that seismograph station right here, really close there uh, to the Santorini. Well, it is on top of the Santorini area. Uh, Five-pointer showing up quite nicely in a lot of the other smaller quakes. Um, so we'll continue to watch that, folks, and uh, report back on anything that changes. Anything can happen at any time. Uh, it seems like 2025 is starting off with a bang. Uh, let's take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe. <clears throat> See what we got. I got to grab a drink of water here real quick. All right, let's see, Alaska area, not so much going on up there. Um, a little bit quieter conditions up there. A couple of threes out there way north into northern Alaska. That's a little interesting, but no big earthquake activity. Uh, a couple a couple more deep earthquakes there into the Izu Trench. Got to watch that. That's uh, shown some signs of uh, uh, interesting activity here recently. Deep activity in the last 24 hours, putting the major strain out here putting some major strain on that uh, subduction zone called the Nankai Trough. 
That's uh, in the area that uh, is pretty well primed for a mega quake. Uh, 34 mile deep, 4.6 here across the southern end of the Curl Kamchatka Trench as well. Um, nothing big going on there for now, but man, a lot of deep activity out here. Look at this little triangle of deep movement. If you think about it, last few days here, we've seen a, a number of deep earthquakes here in the Fiji area, a bunch here in the Java Trench. Now today, uh, some activity in the Izu Trench. So watch this region specifically here soon. I, I think we could see some larger events, whether it's a Nankai Trough or something maybe in between this little triangle of deeper events. Uh, normally, it doesn't take all that long for a bigger adjustment to take place following this deeper uh, activity that we're seeing there on the globe. Uh, New Zealand 3.2, nothing major going on there, uh, there for now. The Campe Flegre region still seeing some activity on the globe. A couple more smaller quakes there. They've been in the uh, swarming stage, but this is, uh, it's, I have to say it's common because we've seen it last year um, and it it's been documented as far as the uh, the swelling of the land, the deflation of the land. I can't re remember the terminology for it or the specific word, um, but it's a it's a uh, it's an event that takes place out there, and they've been monitoring it for thousands of years. Earthquake swarms are very common. Eventually, you know, one of these swarms could lead to an eruption, but it's nothing of abnormal activity yet because we have seen this type of behavior around the Campi Flegrei region in Italy uh, in the past. So until things change, you know, it's just, it's a process that's going on. Something like this though, around the Santorini, that's unprecedented. That's something we haven't seen. Uh, so that's why I've been trying to focus more on that because I feel this is leading uh, up to something much bigger uh, in the area and it hasn't let off. It has not let up yet. Um, so just kind of working on uh, studying it a lot. I've been reading up on this uh, on this area for uh, quite a few days now. Is that another 4.8 coming into the region as we're as we're talking about it? Yeah, within the last two minutes here. So let's take a look at the seismograph station. See what we got. Uh, yep, there it is, 4.8. That that may get upgraded here. I know the EMSC is pretty quick to. Uh, put out a earthquake magnitude, but that pretty decent size uh, mark on that seismograph, uh, seismograph station there. Uh, spectrogram picking that up as well. Uh, looks like about 14 kilometers deep for that 4.8. You know, it's just, it's ongoing. It seems like it had a day or two of pause, but uh, it's, it's continuing to build up here, folks. It's not letting up. I think the longer this goes on here, I think the more likelihood of uh, an eruption across this area. So 4.8 just now into the uh, area just outside of Santorini, Greece, outside the Colombo volcano. I normally title my update videos uh, Santorini uh, volcano area. Um, it's just happening to the east here. A little bit of migration that we've had here in the last couple of weeks towards the Santorini area. But either way, this is a broad region here of uh, some type of intrusion going on well below the surface. All right, uh, let's see, is there anything else going on for earthquake activity? Let's see, South America area, yeah, very, looks tip typical there. A couple of smaller quakes clustering, but uh, Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Let's go ahead and check out space weather here real quick. Um, fairly quiet, only a couple sea flares here in the last 24 hours, really nothing of any major interest going on there for the uh, solar flaring. Looking at the latest magnetogram image here of the sun. Well, yeah, that's about all I have to say about that because there's not a whole lot of complexity out here in terms of these uh, sunspots having, you know, some potential for some stronger flaring. There's really not. One area down here maybe, um, but overall, Man, I, I don't see anything of any noteworthy value there for the uh, flare potential. As far as the auroras go, nothing major in the forecast there for now, folks. Um, Storm Prediction Center, as far as severe weather goes, really nothing major out here in the forecast. Just a marginal risk there across the south here tomorrow, it looks like. Um, California taking a break here from the rain. 
we got a bunch of cold air coming down here uh, associated with, uh, well, cold air. <laughs> cold air coming down from the Canada area, uh, intermixing with some of the moisture down here across the south. A little bit of snow out there for Oklahoma and Arkansas, maybe some ice out there as well. Um, now, this has changed a little bit in terms of the uh, west coast here. looks like Oregon and Washington getting a pretty uh, decent system there. Not really uh, hitting my neck of the woods here in Northern California, maybe along the extreme northwestern coast, but that's about it. Uh, and then after that, uh, well, man, it's just crazy pattern out here. Ooh, that looks like a lot of cold air for the west coast here around the March 4th time period. Yeah, I've got a massive cool pull of air coming down, hitting the west coast. That's something we really haven't had recently. Uh, we've had some warm uh, Pacific storms and then warm high pressure ridges, but most of the colder air has been east of the Rockies here. But it looks like, and I'm not against that, I'm okay with some colder air. Uh, looks like uh, the west coast here is going to get in on some of the action out here for cold air. So that's nice. Looks like maybe some springtime temperatures there across the uh, rest of the uh, country there as we head into March well above normal conditions there all right folks um i'm out of here i'll keep an eye of course on things here there's there's only uh so much we can do just wait and see in regards to uh what's going to take place here around the santorini area yeah see i knew it was a little bit bigger than a five than a 4.8 uh, I, I look at these graphs all too much <laughs> and uh, originally it was 4.8 they upgraded it there to a 5.0. So I'm telling you, things are getting bigger. This 5.0, a little bit further south here towards the Santorini area. So, all right, folks, I'm out of here. Um, if something changes, of course, overnight, we'll jump on here and uh, provide an update first thing in the morning. Either way, we'll be out here in the morning. Um, have a good night. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there.